Another fresh week of primetime news beckons. Trusting you had a great weekend. A good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be finding yourself across the world. It's 7.30 p.m. in Namibia's capital, Vinduk. Much appreciated for tuning in to the Monday edition. I'm Michael Madimba. Energy Corporation leads the bulletin. South Africa's Minister of Electricity, Hossi Encho Ramakopa, recently noted the current regime in which South Africa still provides electricity to Namibia is evidence of the close ties that exist between the two countries. Ramakopa told the media in Vinduk that his country still exports electricity to its northern neighbour despite South Africa experiencing an acute power crisis. Ramakopa stated that the relationship between the two countries is a symbiotic one. The fact that they still continue to provide electricity to Namibia even in the midst of electricity challenges confirm the strength of the fraternal relationship they enjoy with Namibia. Ramakopa was appointed as South Africa's first electricity minister earlier in March by President Cyril Ramaphosa in an effort to find a solution to the country's record-breaking power crisis. Following his talks with the Namibian Minister of Mines and Energy, Tom Alwendo, Ramakopa said they are making progress despite regular load shedding. The minister noted that the private sector is also contributing to the generation capacity with renewable energy. In addition, Ramakopa said that his trip to Winduk is part of the plan to engage with neighboring countries to determine whether they have excess generating capacity that South Africa can buy. Reporting for Primetime News, Ishmael Mukovonda. Switching attention to the courts. The Vinduk High Court on Friday dismissed with costs an application by an energy and mineral exploration company, Red Soil, which sought an order to have the Mines and Energy Minister's refusal to grant them a mining license in January 2021, declared unlawful. More context from this report compiled by Eba Kandolazu. Judge S.C. Shiming Chase also declared the matter final and removed it from the court role. The company wanted the court to also review and set aside Minister Tom Alwendo's decision. Alwendo reportedly declined Red Soil Energy and Mineral Exploration's application for a petroleum exploration license over Blocks 2512A and a portion of Block 2612A due to the company not meeting the requirements and its failure to demonstrate technical and financial capability to carry out exploration operations. Red Soil Managing Director Kaura Kaura in his argument also made damning allegations against the ministry's petrol commissioner Maggie Shino who he says informed him that his company was complained with all the requirements of the ministry but the blocks are reserved for politically connected people. Kaura represented by Patrick Kauta also claims that Shino instructed him to withdraw his company's application and apply for any of the blocks west to those Red Soil applied for, which he refused. Kaura, a geologist, has since attached alleged screenshots of missed WhatsApp calls from Shino, who he claims called him numerous times. Reporting for Primetime News, Ishmael Mukovonda. Moving on. Erongo Governor Nevo Andre Itope has requested the assistance of church leaders, police and community groups in finding ways to assist the neglected boy child in the region. Itope, during a recent tripartite dialogue, noted the boy child has been disregarded in society, especially without the guidance of father figures, thereby pushing them into the hands of drug use as well as other social ills. Our coastal-based correspondent Isabel Bento attended the dialogue and filed this report. Itope during a recent meeting where the three groups said the boy child has been disregarded in society, especially without the guidance of father figures, therefore pushing them into the hands of drug use and other social ills. The boys are not inspired and they tend to become unsuccessful and also personalities that are disturbing our community and societies, the governor highlighted. The meeting was held to deliberate on how they can all collaborate to support boys and young men and provide them with the necessary tools and skills to enable them to become valuable members of society. 
The governor proposed a regular structured engagement between community organizations, churches and the police, where he envisions leaders coming to church services to have conversations for about an hour with congregations to address and discuss these pressing issues. Now, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa vowed Sunday that the country will not be forced to side with any global powers. Is he ready to host the BRICS summit? a summit of major emerging economies. The BRICS summit commencing tomorrow in Johannesburg will see the leaders of Russia, India, China and host nations South Africa seek to widen their influence and push for a shift in global geopolitics. More from this report. South Africa's hosting of the BRICS summit has turned a spotlight on its ties with the Kremlin, especially as it has refused to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. While some of our detractors prefer overt support for their political and ideological choices, we will not be drawn into a contest between global powers, Ramaphosa said in a televised State of the Nation address. We have resisted pressure to align ourselves with any one of the global powers or with influential blocs of nations, he said. Ramaphosa will be joined at the BRICS summit by China's President Xi Jinping, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Brazil's President Lula da Silva. Russia will be presented by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov with President Vladimir Putin participating online. Stay tuned for the business segment. Welcome to the primetime biz segment where business and economics are the primary focus. Minister of Mines and Energy Tom Alwendo revealed that Namibia and South Africa signed a memorandum of understanding that will be of mutual benefit to both countries' energy sectors. Now, the MOU was signed following the visit of South African Minister of Electricity, Kosienjo Ramakopa in Vinduk. Linia Dishena filed this insert. Alwendo said the memorandum of understanding will focus on green hydrogen oil and gas and infrastructure related to energy. He said with South Africa as a neighboring country, they have a lot of collaborations and energy is one of them. This visit is important given the energy diversity that they have, not only in South Africa, but definitely in the whole region. We all know that we do not have enough energy, especially electricity, Alwendo noted. Alwendo added that Namibia is not only buying electricity from South Africa, it equally shares infrastructure. At the same occasion, Ramagoba said the two countries' relation is symbiotic, as despite South Africa continuing to grapple with the pressing issue of load shedding, they continue to provide electricity to Namibia. He noted that there are opportunities that present themselves in the energy sector to build energy security for the region, including Namibia. Reporting for Primetime News, Diana Kauta. Fish consumption in the country is generally low. Now, the 11th National Fish Consumption Day to be held at Katima Mlilo in the Zambezi region next month aims at boosting local fish consumption. Let's find out some of the strategies being employed. 
The event, set to take place on 28 September, is a collaboration between the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, the National Fish Consumption Promotion Trust and stakeholders. It was initiated in 2012 to promote fish consumption at the regional level but has over the years since been rolled out in 10 host regions. The National Fish Consumption Promotion Trust annually raises funds for regional educational development in the host region through this initiative by procuring school items that are needed by that region. Speaking at the event, Fisheries and Marine Resources Minister Derek Clausen commended the National Fish Consumption Promotion Trust's efforts in demonstrating the commitment of stakeholders in the fishing industry to contribute to achieving quality education for the children. Clausen further explained that Namibia aims to achieve at least 20,4 kilograms of fish consumption per person per year, which translates to about 47,000 metric tons consumed within Namibia per year. That concludes our top news segment for tonight. Let's now turn our attention to the weather forecast for the likely weather conditions as spring slowly dawns on us. Thereafter, we'll bring you your Econ Roundup.
welcome to Sport Planet, your go-to segment for all things sport in action. Football kickstarts the segment. The Marine Namibia Premier League Champions African Stars are on the right track to realizing their dream of competing in the 2023-24 Confederation of African Football Champions League after they registered a win on Saturday. The Katutura-based outfit overcame Zambian champions Power Dynamos with a 2-1 win through goals from Peter Adiwo and Edmund Kambanda in the first and second half respectively at the Dobsonville Stadium in Johannesburg. Now, Power Dynamos' Andy Boyeli's consolation goal will give the Zambians a fighting chance when they host stars in the return league scheduled for the 26th of August at the Levi Mwanawasa Stadium in Zambia. On to some rugby. Vinduk-based outfits Trasco United and Wanderers will clash in the final of the 2023 Namibia Rugby Union Premier League final after overcoming tough competition from the arrivals in the semi-finals on Saturday. The Namibia Rugby Union held its semi-finals for the different league divisions at the Hage Game Cup Stadium on Saturday. Now, the match between United and Walvis Bay-based Kudus saw the coastal outfit firing in all cylinders and kept fans on their toes throughout the match which ended in a nail-biting 28-27 victory in United's favour. Meanwhile, in the second Premier League semi-finals, defending champions Wanderers overcame Rioboth with a 32-20 scoreline to book themselves a slot in the final against their biggest arch rivals, United. Stand by for your sports roundup. On that note, we've come to the end of tonight's broadcast. Many thanks for always tuning in and much appreciated for your viewership. In order to subscribe to our channel for local, continental and global headlines, do follow the prompts at the bottom right of the screen. Do feel free to engage with us in the comment section. Your feedback is invaluable to us. Otherwise, let's do this again tomorrow. From myself, Michael Madimba and my creative crew behind the scenes, it's good night.